Good morning. Would you stand and sing with us on this Easter morning? are trapped on the path of least resistance, but the labyrinth is overgrown. Aren't you tired of using persistence? I just want to go home. But how do I get out? I look around and around and around and I spiral into this dance with the devil in my head and little by little I'm riddled with sickness. I know he can fix this because I won't settle for survival. The stories of today and right through the Bible, there is no degree of separation of those who feel this heaviness on all the weak, but he's stronger. Injustice for evil deeds, he will conquer. See, he doesn't leave when everyone else does. He loves. Maybe you don't really know him though. And you're wondering, is this story reliable? Well, this isn't some playhouse I'm playing pretending as if a man noted in history who died on a cross and rose in victory with witnesses is a figment of my imagination. Are you even listening? He's a tangible friend. I'm telling you, I've walked with him. Or ask his mother, she wept at his bloodied feet and he left her behind for you and me. A mother's love, an unbreakable bond, but he broke it and everything he was owed broken for our atonement so that we could rise above the thickest thorns because he rose and grabbed death by the horns. A power so great we can't contain with skin so thin in our jars of clay. And when death calls my name, I'll go out with my hands up and pray. Because we won the race. Even though at times I had fallen with doubt, I just followed him because he is the way out. So come follow me, he said. There's new life. The night has been put to bed. And it's time to wake up, baby. It's Sunday morning. And he's made fresh bread.
this morning. Thank you for joining us at our 11 a.m. service. You know, whether you are watching online or you are here with us in the room, you are welcome. Whether you are someone who is just curious and someone brought you along today, you are welcome. Whether Easter is your hope and it's your lifeline, you are welcome. Whether you are old or you are young, you are welcome. Whether you love to dance and celebrate or you dance and celebrate a little bit more like this, you are welcome. But if you are young and you like to dance, all of the kids, all the way up from the balcony, if you would like, and all the way down here, we need your help to be exuberant in our music this morning. And so there are some shakers and some baskets. Parents, you can bring your kids down if they're at the age they would feel more comfortable with you uh, here. And we're gonna just uh, continue in worship for the next two songs with some of our kids dancing. And if there's no kids in the house, well, young adults, I guess it's you. <laughs> Let's continue to sing, Christ the Lord is risen today. Mm -hmm. And just as the kids come forward, I'm gonna divide us into two halves of the room. You see, we have this tradition at Peace Portal that we say, he is risen. Right, okay, so you guys, this half the room from the balcony, if straight up and this way, you are voice one. And I would love to hear when I say one, two, three, he is risen in your loudest, most exuberant voice. And this half the room, don't have to wait for me to cue you. As soon as they are finished, you tell back to that side. He is risen indeed. Okay, should we try it? All right, one, two, three. He is risen. He is risen That's pretty good. Let's do it one more time. We'll start this song. Ready? One, two, three. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Beautiful. He is risen indeed.
Good job, team. Uh, kids, if you want to throw those in the baskets and then make sure you go and rescue your parents, they will be taking you to Kids Shine shortly. If you are new here, so thrilled that you've joined us. Kids Shine, you'll hear shortly, but it'll be upstairs and the kids will have a great time in their classes while the rest of us are here. I'm going to invite you to take a seat and turn your attention to this in the know on the screen. Welcome to Peace Portal Church this morning. My name is Jeff. My name is Levi. Happy Easter to all of you. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Thank you so much for joining us. We're looking forward to the service today. It is going to be so good. But there's a few things you need to know about what's happening. Thanks for joining us for this Easter service. We will be together just over an hour in the service here and have opportunities for connection afterwards. If you are joining us for church online or here in person, we'd love to say hello. Yeah, so please connect with us if you'd like online or you can do that, you can do that by joining the chat. If you're here with us in person, please fill out a connect card so we can get in touch with you. We will have coffee and hawker buns in the foyer following this service. Please say hello to someone you don't know and ask them what their favorite Easter memory is. Yeah, and if you brought kids with you, we're gonna have an awesome scavenger hunt that they can do. You can get the sheets for that at the Connect Center or at Kids Shine. Once you've done that, you can bring it back to the Connect Center where you'll be rewarded with a delicious edible prize. If you'd like to get connected, we've got lots of ways to connect in. Yeah, there's great examples of that would be our Living Well, Mental Health Support Group, our Grief Support Groups, Moms Connect, Young Adults, Journey, which is our ministry for high schoolers and junior high. We have community groups that meet in homes, and we have a kids camp coming up this summer. All great ways to connect, and you can find out more about those by going to our website, peaceportalalliance.com. We gather weekly on Sundays. Our regular service time is 10 a.m. Hope to see you again here soon. Yeah, and if you brought kids with you this morning, now is the time you can head up to Kids Shine. They're meeting upstairs on the second floor, and you can head that way right now. Well, that's everything you need to know. On behalf of myself, Jeff, and my friend Levi, Happy Easter! Easter. Bye, buddy. Turn on my mic and then add my own happy Easter to you all. Thanks for being here, folks, to uh, celebrate the resurrection. Today is truly an amazing weekend. Uh, today is an amazing day. But it might not feel that amazing to some of us here today if we were to be perfectly honest. On Good Friday, um, we considered how our familiarity with certain stories or certain people or certain events can actually, and in this case, the story of the resurrection, how that can actually blunt the impact of the story that we are remembering. 
Because when we're familiar with something, we tend to want to just uh, kind of note that we know it and then move on to the next thing. And so the metaphor we used on Friday was we can be like a rock skipping along the surface of the lake. And we touch down on a lot of points, but we never really get impacted that much by it. It's only when the rock slows down and stops and starts to sink, that's when the rock starts to really know the depth of the lake. So familiarity with the story um, and familiarity with the resurrection story can actually uh, cause us this weekend to pass by events that are absolutely monumental, but they don't really impact us. But there's other dynamics at play as well. One of them is this, the law of diminishing returns. The law of diminishing returns was initially an economic term that then the social sciences decided they'd start using, and it, they used it to describe this broadly observed reality that at some point, uh, the things we have as human beings start to lose their value to us at a certain stage along uh, our having them. And we know this to be true, right? Because we've all bought a new pair of clothes or bought a new car or something. And the first few times when we get into the car, we put on the new clothes, we're just dopamine flying around in our brains. We love this thing. And then eventually this new thing becomes kind of an old thing. It gets normalized. It gets common. And in fact, it starts to get underappreciated and we start looking at the new thing that we would like to replace this once amazing thing with. This uh, law of diminishing return, it, it actually keeps us on a consumer treadmill. It keeps our economy going by and large. It's not particularly good for our souls or creation, but it's one of the realities of our lives. But the law of diminishing return doesn't just uh, kind of apply to our stuff. It, it can apply to our relationships too. And it can actually bring great harm to our relationships. You know, you've got a new friend. You've got a new person that you're dating. You've got maybe uh, someone you've entered into marriage with. And, and at the time, you're celebrating them. You value them, them. You're so appreciative of them being in your life. And eventually, they get known by you, and you become very familiar with them, and then maybe even taken for granted by you, and, and plus they have this tendency to exaggerate all the time, and, and that's really annoying. So listen, the law of diminishing returns, this gets better, the law of diminishing returns actually has a partner in crime, and that is our human tendency, it's scientifically proven, if you're a human, we have a more natural tendency to gravitate towards that which is negative or notice things that aren't ideal rather than the good things. That's just one of the ways we're made. There's lots of theories on why that is the case for us as human beings. Some of us, based on our personalities, might be more prone to this than others, but this is just the reality of being part of the human species. And so uh, our propensity to notice and focus on the less than ideal kind of partners with the law of diminishing returns so that we inevitably as people naturally move towards appreciating something and, and by appreciating I mean not just with our head knowing cognitively that we appreciate it but I mean with our emotions, our being, joy and excitement and happiness and delight. We naturally move from appreciating things and even people more towards indifference. And that's our happy Easter sermon. Let's pray. No, before we change gears, and I will change gears, we need to ask the obvious question, can this happen with our faith? Is it possible that the familiarity that we have with the story or even the law of diminishing returns, our propensity to focus on what we don't like about things, could that actually play out in our own relationship with God or with Jesus? And the answer, of course, is yes. Yes, it can. But here's the good news. That's not inevitable. It's not a foregone conclusion that that always happens. While this might naturally occur for us in a lot of areas of our life, it doesn't necessarily have to. And one of the key factors in keeping us from moving from appreciation to indifference, one of the key things that we can bring into our lives is remembering and gratitude. It's to intentionally decide to direct our thinking on the good, that which is worthy of our praise and admiration and our gratitude, 
the, the, the blessings that we have, that which is worthy of celebration and honor. We, we are stirring ourselves up, our inner selves, just like David did in the Psalms. If you read the book of Psalms, so many of those include David saying, come on, soul, wake up. Come on, soul, don't forget all of the benefits of God. Don't miss out. Sing for joy. Throughout the Psalms, David is having to rehearse and remind himself about who God is and what he has done. And that's what we're inviting you into this Easter weekend. That's what we invited people into on Good Friday, and we're going to continue that today. We're going to not skip along the surface as much as we are going to stop and slow down and try and sink in the depths of the mystery and the love and the power of the Easter event and the resurrection of Christ. And be stirred up again with joy and wonder and worship at our God who hung on a cross, died, and rose again. And so today, you're not going to hear anything new. You're not going to hear anything fancy or novel. Um, that's not the point of today. New and unique is not the goal. The goal is remembering today, reminding ourselves of the story, slowing down, sinking deep into what we already know, and having our hearts stirred. And so um, you're going to hear a bunch of different people read uh, today, uh, readings that describe the, the morning of the resurrection, and then more reading about what the benefits or the outflow of this weekend is into our lives. And a lot of what you're going to hear, probably 95% of it, is going to be Bible verses, all compiled together to help us recall just how good the good news of Easter is. You're also going to hear a phrase, jar of clay. If you've been uh, with us over the last little while, you know that that's a phrase that the Apostle Paul uses to describe humanity. He says, we're, jars, we're like jars of clay. And he means by that, we're, we're all pretty normal, and we're all pretty common, and we're all pretty weak and vulnerable and fragile. On Good Friday, we used the word jar of clay to describe all of us as humanity in our own weakness and brokenness and sinfulness. Today, we're going to be using jar of clay again, but it's actually uh, switching a little bit today because jar of clay is still des describing us as human beings, but we're describing a different reality today. Yes, we are still human and we're still weak and we're still broken in various ways, but we are also being transformed and strengthened and sustained because of the presence of the living God in our lives. And so you are going to hear a whole bunch of reading and we're going to ask ourselves to stir up this wonder and worship of our good God who died and rose again. So let's pray together. Spirit of the living God, we pray that you would come and fill this place with your presence. We pray that you would fill us. And in these moments, may we understand more fully your incredible love, your unmatched power, and the incredible effects of our salvation in Christ. Would you overwhelm us, Lord, with the profound truth of the gospel that in one way we know so well, but in another we seem to only know in part. Stir up our love, our joy, our wonder, our worship in our hearts today. Spirit, come and take us deeper, we pray. Amen. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again? 
go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. I am, Jesus declares, the living one. I died, and look, I am alive again forevermore, and I have the keys of death and Hades. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, grave, where is your sting? For I am the resurrection and the life. I offered up my life for your trespasses and was raised to life for your justification. And because of this, God exalted him, that is Jesus, to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Would you stand? And we're just gonna jump right into the bridge. And what a beautiful name. And death could not hold you, the veil tore before you, you silenced the bows of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again. And you have no
Jar of clay, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit, who gives life, has set you free from the law of sin and death, the righteousness given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who put their trust in him. For while it is true that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, it is also true that all can be justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God made him who knew no sin to be sin on your behalf, so that you might enjoy right relationship with God. So, we now have peace with God. And more, because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us spiritually alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God purchased for us in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Because Jesus lives, you too shall live, in this life and the next. And who can separate you from this love and life of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship, or persecution or famine, or nakedness or danger or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And so, jar of clay, when you depart from this life, your new life begins in a place where there will be no more tears, no more pain, for the old order of things has passed away and God himself will be with you. The next life will be better by far.
nobody but Jesus who pulled us out of that bed. He did, He did. Who paid for all of our sin? Nobody but Jesus who rescued me from the grave. Yahweh. Nobody but Jesus who rescued us from the grave. Yahweh, Yahweh, who gets the glory and praise. Oh, nobody but Him. This is our God. This is who He is. He loves us. This is our God. This is what He does. absolutely in awe of the fact that you, the creator of the universe, the one who put the sun, moon, and stars in their place, the all-powerful, all-knowing, ever-present God saw the cross from the very beginning. And you, in your wisdom, had a plan that involved excruciating suffering for you, a punishment meant for me, a broken, selfish sinner but you are just and wise. So you couldn't ignore sin. You knew that it separated us from you. You couldn't sweep it under the rug. So you, King Jesus, stepped down from your very throne, took the punishment meant for me, us, broken, selfish sinners, defeating death once and for all, giving everyone freedom and direct access to you, God. And then you didn't just call us slaves or subjects, you named us sons and daughters. Pulled a seat out for us at your very table. Filled us with the power and authority of your Holy Spirit. Talk about the greatest gift any human could ever receive. So as we celebrate that today, Jesus, please continue to make us people who surrender our lives to you who trust that you are good, and who obey when we hear your voice. Let us not run around this world as dim, flickering lights enticed by the pleasures and promises of this world, thinking that we're going to get filled up and everything that we need. Because, Lord, that only comes from you. So just as your hands and feet were pierced for me, for us, May my life, may our lives be marked by every encounter that we have with the King. May we be able then to speak of your goodness, your love, your mercy, your joy, and your presence. And just as you pour into us, Lord, may we pour out into a world that needs you. Thank you seems insufficient, but thank you that you are alive. Amen. Jar of clay, you are not alone. Jesus told his disciples, I am returning to the Father, but I will ask the Father and he will give you another counselor to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth. He lives in you. You won't be left alone as orphans. So do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You believe in God, believe also in me. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world, and I can help you. So, 
Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you with my righteous right hand. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will be your refuge and your strength. You might be hard pressed on every side, but you will not be crushed. You might find yourself perplexed, but you won't spiral into despair. You may endure persecution, but you aren't abandoned by me, struck down, and you won't be destroyed. And this all-surpassing power to endure through life will only make it more obvious that God is present and active in your life. Not only that, the problems and trials of life help us develop endurance, and endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with love. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles, in comparison to the hope of eternal life, these are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. And even when I walk through the valley in the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me, and your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And in the end, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So it's fairly quick, but just consider the gospel that we have just rehearsed even in these few readings. There is no condemnation for our sin. Instead, we are forgiven by God. There is no alienation from the one who created us. Instead, we are reconciled. We're brought back into relationship with him. There's no animosity between us as sinful humans and the perfect and holy God. We now have peace with our maker. The inevitable consequences of sin is death, but God died in our place and gifts us now instead with eternal life for those who put their trust in him. There's no rejection for our arrogance and our rebellion. Instead, we're adopted into his family and we're beloved sons and daughters of the Most High. And so we're not left as orphans, alone in the troubles of this world. No, the very Spirit of God is with us as our helper and our strength. And so we have hope. Even in the midst of the broken and not yet perfect world that we are in, we have hope. And we can find peace in the midst of the chaos of this life because God has us. No matter what, he has us. Whatever happens here, he's got us and we are his for all eternity. And speaking of eternity, there's no more fear of death our inevitable physical death, because death has been defeated by Jesus. Death now simply acts as a transition into a new and a better life, one that we were originally created for to begin with. When we remind ourselves of the outcome of this day, the only reasonable response, if you believe it at all, the only reasonable response is some combination of joy and wonder and worship and delight and gratitude and love for this incredible God who has given us everything in Christ. I hope even in these few moments you felt your own heart stirred with appreciation and gratitude for what God has done for you. It might be that some of you are hearing about this for the first time. This is uh, maybe in a new way and you're compelled perhaps even in these moments to respond to God's invitation to walk with him, to do life with him. 
to enter into his salvation and his goodness. You can do that right now, uh, here in this room, online, just in the quietness of your own heart and mind. You can acknowledge that you want that. You can acknowledge to God and admit to him that you've tried to find life apart from him. The, The Bible calls that sin. You can acknowledge that and ask for his forgiveness and tell God, I I want to figure out what it means to do life now together with you, to submit my life to you. And and that's what it means to become a follower of Jesus. It's to die to our own selves and find this new resurrection life. You can do that just in the quietness of your own heart and mind and invite God to fill you with his spirit and bring you back to new eternal life. And we'd love to hear if you're making that kind of a decision because there's lots of ways we want to partner with you in this new adventure that you're going on with God. But it might be that some of us here today uh, would profess to be followers of Jesus, but maybe even in your own heart and mind, you're, you're recognizing your own perhaps indifference as it relates to Jesus and life and faith. And if that's the case, today, Easter Sunday is a great day to just acknowledge that to God and say, God, I'm not where I want to be. Would you come and draw near to me? Would you come and do a new thing in my life? Today would be a great day to say, God, I want to take some purposeful steps towards you as well, trusting that it doesn't have to stay this way, that there's more of you to experience in my life. And if you don't know where to start, again, we'd love to just journey with you and walk with you in that. In either of these two cases, you can fill out a Connect card in the front of the uh, seat back in front of you and drop it off at the Connect Welcome Center or just track down me or another one of the pastors um, here today. And we'd love to have a coffee with you and talk about what it means to do life with God, which is what we believe everyone was created for. Today we're going to have a chance to witness a few baptisms, people who have been doing this journey with God, and now they've made the decision to take this sort of public declaration. It's an opportunity for them to say in their faith community, I'm trusting in and I have given my allegiance to Jesus. And so for those of you who don't know, baptism is a, is a symbol an outward symbol of an inward reality where someone does die to themselves uh, going under the water. They don't stay there too long, don't worry. They get back up and resurrected into new life in Jesus. And so uh, we're going to have a chance to just hear a few of their stories briefly. If you turn your attention to the screen now and then we'll get to witness their baptisms today. Hi, my name's Sid. My name's Kira. My name is Eden. I've been around Peace Portal for 15 years. 12 years. I've been attending Peace Portal Church ever since I was a kid. It started with me being baptized as a baby, and then I went on to become 14 and get confirmed. I came to Canada in 88 and met my wife, Frances. When I was around maybe the age of like 11 or 12, I was like getting bullied a lot. Kind of wondered like why me, kind of like, I was always like really frustrated. I had a couple friends who um, went to church a lot and were like, you should like, you know, pray to God about this or, you know, just come to journey. And so I thought about it and I decided to, you know, like pray to God. My parents wanted me to make the decision on my own, you know, to ask him in my heart. It was on the Sunday Easter. I just asked my mom while she was putting me and my sister to bed. I was like, can I ask God into my heart? And she was like, yes, of course. She sat us down and we just did it. It was amazing. When you look back at some of the things you may have done or like will do in like the future and just kind of knowing that he forgives you. When I look back on my life, I have sinned a lot. And uh, I want the forgiveness from the Lord to give me that clearance of my sins and uh, let them move on. And I believe he will help me in that respect. I feel like God has walked aside me by like, he's always opening new doors and sometimes I might be like, maybe not today. And then he opens it next thing you know, a month later. Jesus to me, I believe will be my savior to come and forevermore. Whenever I'm like struggling like through something, I find that he's always there for me. He's with me every single day and it just feels amazing. Like I just, ever since I asked him into my heart, I feel brighter. I felt like now was like the time to take that extra step with God. I wanted to get baptized now was because I feel like it was the next step with my journey with God. With my life the way it was going, I felt that being fully immersed when I'm baptized, at Easter, 
I can start a new life with, with Christ. I think symbolically it means to me that I'm going to start a new life. The old life is gone and the new life is going to start with Christ. This is Sid. Sid, is Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? Yes, he is. Do you believe that he died and rose again? I do. Is it your desire to follow him all the rest of the days of your life? I do. Well, then on your confession, it's my honor to baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Dead to sin. And alive in Christ. Celebrate and worship together.
Easter morning, would you hear these words again from Philippians chapter 2? Because Jesus was obedient to death, even death on the cross, this is how his father exalted him. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on the earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And I don't know where you're at this morning, but I want to be found as one that is willing to bow my knee before him to acknowledge that he is my king, that he is king. And it says one day every knee will bow. So let's continue just one last song. We made an Easter medley of some of our favorites. And so just join along. Would you fill this place with your song, with your voice? No one else can sing for you. No one else can declare that he is Jesus but your own mouth. And so if you are bold enough, would you do that this morning?
benediction from Good Friday first. At just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. But through his incomparably great power, God raised Christ Jesus from the dead and seated him at the, his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is called on, not only in this present age, but in the age to come. And as a result, everyone, anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Thanks be to God. We know Easter is an amazing day, but we know that also life is challenging. And so some of you might be here today and you're just not feeling the celebration because you came carrying something heavy. And we'd love to pray with you in that. There's going to be some people at both sides of our uh, sanctuary where you can go and receive prayer. People who want to carry that burden with you, please make use of that if you'd like. And before you leave, we'd love to carve you up a little bit. So we have a whole bunch of hot cross buns, like a lot. Like we need you to eat them a lot. So take a moment, grab a coffee, grab a juice, grab a hot cross bun, say hello to some people before you head off for the rest of your day. God's grace and peace to you all on this Easter weekend.